Okay, hello. It's time now to revisit this project again. This is the uh, project of being a module A counter. There's two sets of them. One set here and your set there. And uh, we left off uh, after we built the breadboarding and get it all working that we started working on the printed circuit boards and uh, now it's time to start loading the printed circuit boards and converting this now from the uh, breadboard to the printed circuit board and that's coming up next. Okay, This all started whenever I try, wanted to show how to make a master-slave uh, register flip-flop using all transistors and I did a playlist on that called master-slave register made from discrete transistors and I did about seven videos in that there series there and then from there I combined that to a binary decimal converter and I did a series there a playlist called transistor up down binary decimal counter and I have four videos in there and now we got those accomplished. Now it's time to start building the circuit. Let's get to work. Okay, at this point here, now I have both RS latches completed. And what we'll do now is we'll go through a test here and see how it's going to work now, testing it out. Okay, I have 5 volts applied to this here. Whenever I touch this green wire to the LED here, it should switch over, and it does. So it's latching properly, back and forth here. Okay, so that passed the test. Now what I'll do is I'll lower the voltage below 5 volts until a light just barely comes on. I'm about 3 volts now and we still have good uh, latching capability. Now I'll raise it above 5 volts up to about 10 volts. I'm now around 10 volts. Again, good latching. Okay, so it passed all the tests. So now ready to start on the next part of the circuitry which would be the AND gates now. And that's coming up next. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm starting the wiring process now. Getting all the wiring done here now. I got this here wiring going here. And uh, 
right now where I'm at right here is a collector to the first resistor base here of the AND gate and that would be I have the wired in here the collector inner base collector and that would go down here to the first uh, first resistor here in the AND gate thread that through and then when I put the heat of the iron on there it just melts the plastic coating on the wire and it uh, solders it right to the thing there then I put solder on there now I'm looking through my big magnifying glass so I can see this Melts it right to there. There it is. I can just cut it off right here. And we're good. And that's that wire right there, across there. Okay, I'll finish up the rest of the wire and then we'll give it a try and see how this works. I got the uh, first set of AND gates in. Once I get that working, then I'll put the next set of AND gates in, which is the input to the uh, flip-flop uh, register. Okay, this is what we got done so far. <coughs> the red marks here are the wiring over here and here. And uh, now we'll give it a try and, and we'll uh, work it and test it and see how it works at this point. Okay, now we have this much done of it right now, it's just this here part here. We still have the front side to put on yet, which I said before, that's the data input, the set and reset input, and the JK part. But right now we're just going to check this and see how this works this way here, put this to the test here. There's the uh, light on the circuit board here, the Q and not Q. Over here the same thing. Now, this switch right here would be the, uh, would be the clock circuit right here, the inverter, clock inverter. When that goes high, that means that disconnects then these two AND gates, and this here should be free willing. Whenever I bring this back to a low, what's ever happening here will then show up over here. So right now I should ha right now I'm going to put the uh, clock inverter high like this, and this light here should go back and forth, and this should remain the same where, no matter where it's at. It remains the same. No change here, and this goes back and forth. I should be also able to change this back and forth like this. And changing this back and forth doesn't change that. Now, wherever this is sitting on, whenever I let go now of the, of the clock, I now open the clock, and it switches. I put the clock back in again, switch this over here, switches that, then open the clock, and it switches over again. So now it's working properly to this point here. We have this working now. We have the uh, clock inverter working and we have the uh, flip-flops working. So it passed the test. Uh, we have all the soldering done properly. Everything's done properly. So we tested this. It all works properly. Now the next thing to do is it work these here AND gates. Build these onto that now and then the whole register would be done. Okay, we have the first uh, JK flip-flop register uh, built here on a printed circuit board. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put it through a battery of tests and make sure it's all it's functioning with all of the uh, functions that it has now. Okay, now for the first test, we're going to do is we're going to check the uh, JK function of the flip-flop. We're going to make sure that this is working like a master-slave flip-flop. Any input that enters on the J or the K side here. As long as the clock is not touched, the output should remain stable. It's only when the clock signal goes down and comes back up on the trailing edge that we should have a change in the output. Here is the uh, JK inputs right here. If I put an input to here, there's no change in the output until I turn it, put the clock down, and then let the clock up, and it changes over. We'll check the other input now. The input comes in. There's no change in the output until I put the clock down and let the clock up, and it changes over. So now we know that the JK uh, flip-flop is working properly as a master-slave flip-flop. The next test we'll put it through now will be the toggle flip-flop function. And that's coming up next. Okay, for the final test, I have both the J and the K inputs connected to the positive side of the battery. 
So according to that, whenever the J and the K are connected to the pulsar, they're buried at the same time, the clock, uh, every time the clock goes down and back up again, we should have a change in state on the output, and that's called a toggle. So now I hit the uh, clock inverter here, let it up, and the toggle's over, down, let it up, toggle's over. So we now have a toggle flip-flop. The JK flip-flop is working as a toggle flip-flop now. So we know now that the, uh, the whole circuit is working properly. It passed all the battery tests, and it's uh, a success in the uh, build of the circuit. Okay, I have the second one built now on this board. It's toggling, so if it's toggling, that means then that everything's working on it properly. So the toggle function's working on this one here. So that's two of them made. I have a third one to build now, and this whole board will be complete then. Okay, we have the third one on here now. It's completed. So this is one board that's completed. And I have the second board now that I'm working on, and I'm almost done with that one too. And so that's what I have so far.